you like. Hi everyone, happy, happy Monday. Um, hope you're all okay. Hope everybody had a lovely, lovely weekend. Um, I had quite a, quite a peaceful day yesterday, actually, for me. I did a lot of sewing, but um, sewing at my own pace. It was lush. It was stuff for work, not for me, but it was um, it was still nice. It was a nice day. And we had a, a Zoom Modern Quilt Guild meeting, which was lovely to see some of the ladies. It was fab. Um, thank you to anybody who watched um, the <laughs> YouTube live that we did on Saturday, the Hexy Manx tutorial. Um, <laughs> It, yeah, we had we had a few technical issues, but luckily it went fine, and we managed to get it working for one o'clock. But um, yeah, there was a <laughs> yeah, Phil and I. There was a lot of blue air in this room, a lot of blue air trying to make it work. It's nowhere near as easy as this. This you literally press like two buttons, and you're like, woohoo, I'm here. YouTube doesn't work like that, really doesn't. So um, I'm just turn that down a minute. I can see it right in the corner of my eye. Um, so yeah, no, it was, uh, but it went really well. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, who's there? Who's coming online, Drew? Uh, we've got Carolyn. Hi, Carolyn. Pamela. Hi, Pamela. Uh, Sonia. Hi, Claire. Sonia. Hi, Claire. Jean. Anne. Jean. Anne. Hello, lovelies. Every, uh, hopefully you're all okay. Everyone's well. We, it finally snowed here yesterday, but it was too wet for it to settle wasn't happy I love the snow and uh yeah it started to snow quite heavily but it just more melted straight away so that wasn't fun at all um first things first um everybody who um watched the hexi manx tutorial on youtube um we asked you to comment live with a um a a phrase which was geckos love gin because you know we do <laughs> um, and we put all of your names we went back through it and put all of your names into a um, into a random name generator on Google because it was easier than everybody in a hat so I put them all into because I could just copy and paste them into a random name generator and the winner is so this was my little printout of the name generator ready drum roll the winner of the little hexi kit is I don't know if you can see that. Carolyn Davis. Carolyn Davis, this is coming to you. Okay. Um, if you could drop us a message um, on our Facebook page, just with your address and everything, that would be brilliant. And what we've done is we've put together a kit so you can actually make, have a go at the Hexi Manx. So there's a mode of scrap pack. There's the full pattern. There's a meter of backing fabric. And then I put coordinating thread and needles in there for you okay so that's all coming to you so yeah um all in there like that and that is oh, can't get it back in there, get it back in there. <laughs> that'll be winging its way to you lovely okay so that's going to you so get that out of the way in fact Drew might need to shove that over there um or just out of the way somewhere because when we get to the sewing machine you're not going to be able to see past that <laughs> Um, and I've got a daily deal for you as well, which kind of ties in with what the tutorial is as well. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to have a little go at this birch tree quilting, okay? Which is a brilliant way of using up your scraps. And I had a lush time yesterday doing this, this afternoon, and we're going to do the, the ninth block to go in here. It's a It was incredibly quick. All of this took me maybe two hours, two and a half hours. Um, yeah really really quick to do lovely way of using up your all your scraps and all those tiny little bits that we get like you don't want to throw that away it's really cute um so we can use that up um but the whole idea is it kind of looks like birch trees you know that sort of you know when the bark all peels and you get those lovely lines and all in it so it's kind of that modern abstracty you don't have to do it with bright colors um i was actually as i was doing it thinking it would look incredible in monochrome if you used like all of your, you know, like greys and blacks and silvers and maybe a little bit of glitter or something in there in your strips and put them against yeah. white or yeah. do them in like whites and blacks and then put them against grey, I think they'd look stunning. Um, so we're going to do that today. But because we're doing this and it uses a lot of fat quarters for your background fabric, I've got a little bundle daily deal for you. Should already be in the daily deal section. Yeah. So I've we put nine um solids together for you so they'll either be macawa solids or moda solids a mixture they're fat quarters you've got nine fat quarters in there okay and i've just done a lovely color rainbow color for you so you can play around with it don't have to use it for this project you could use it for whatever you want they're just really good for your stash you've got nine fat quarters in there for 13 pound 50 which makes them one pound 50 a fat quarter 
okay so real bargain for you they're on the website already in the daily deal section so i think i've only got 30 of them though so um grab them while you while you can all right um so anybody any questions or comments there before we get started no helen says hi hi helen uh, says congratulations to carolyn that's all right uh, suzanne says hi hi suzanne lovely lovely so um what we're going to do then is we're going to do this this birch tree today to be honest i've always i've seen it around for years and always wanted to have a play around with it so this was a perfect excuse it's totally self-indulgent i grabbed what one of my scrap buckets and took out a small handful <laughs> It still hasn't gone down at all. Honestly, the bucket is still rammed. Well, the, and I've got lots of scrap buckets, but it's still rammed full. It's hardly used up any at all, to be honest. But I'm getting a whole quilt top out of it. So um, I've just pulled out loads of little bits. So it could be two and a half inch squares. It could be tiny little strips of pieces like this. Mm. You know, they can be really small pieces, little tiny diddy bits. As long as they're at least three quarters of an inch wide, anything between... I mean, three quarters of an inch is quite little, but three quarters of an inch up to about two, two and a quarter inches. I wouldn't go any bigger than that because you kind of lose this effect. Um, and we're going to join them in two different ways. So we're going to start with the real simple way, which is just joining them end to end. But you get much bigger. You don't get that as many stripes in it this way. So I'm just going to grab a couple of strips like this and I literally just in my scraps I cut off I literally just went through and went right oh that's a one and a half I can get two and a half out of that one I can get one and a quarter out of that one it really doesn't matter okay so I'm going to just grab some little bits like this and grab another one oh, so we oh that's a nice skinny one right sides together and we're just going to join them up in pairs it doesn't matter if one's bigger than the other like that because we're going to trim them down anyway okay so let's grab a few of these like this and we're going to nip over to the sewing machine you're just going to pair up random scraps it's a little bit like mile a minute okay pair up your random scraps so uh, let's have that one and take these ones over pop over to the sewing machine and you're just going to sew them together a quarter of an inch okay so i've just got the right sides together and i'm going to sew that short end a quarter of an inch like that Okay, so anybody else there? Anybody having a chat? Uh, what did you get up to this weekend? Suzanne has very nice colours. Yeah, I just, I pulled out a load of like plainish fat quarters that I had in my stash. Um, and like I said, a scrap bucket. And it, it came together really quite easily, actually, and very, very quickly. You'll see now how quickly it comes together. Um, I would suggest starting like I have with just three kind of strips in each one. But once you've done a couple, you can get you can get fancy with them and add extras. So just chain piece those away. Let's move this out of the way. I'm just going to give them a quick press. So give it a quick press like that. So I'm going to show you kind of both methods that I use. This one, which was just end to end, which gives you slightly longer, thinner stripes. And then we're going to do a little bit of the other, which gives you much smaller stripes. Okay. And then all I did was go, right, I'm going to chop that off about there. Keep that little bit for the next one. Let's chop that off about there. I only want a little diddy bit. That goes on the next one. Okay, being really random, that would go on the next one. Really, really random. And then I join these two together like that. And then let's have just only, let's have just a little bit of the green like that. Okay, so I'm going to just join these together in a strip. I'm not measuring. That the whole point of this is to kind of be really loose and you know don't overthink it don't start thinking about oh I want to put this color with this color although you could color theme them if you wanted to you know that might be quite nice actually you could do like all your blue scraps on one or your red scraps on another you know you could really play around with this once you got the hang of it there we go so give that another press any other questions there anybody chatting to me today um. Some, uh, Jackie says she can't find the Daily Deal. The Daily Deal? Oh. If somebody's there, can you double check that it's on there for me? i am definitely put it on. Hang on, I'm going to check here. Oh, my mum's wrong again. <laughs> I have to call her back in a second. My mum's in having a knee op at the moment. She's had it done. She had it done Friday. Right, let me check whether it's coming up. Sarah, I did. Sarah, if you're there, love, can you double check for me that I put it on? Shop. 
Um, daily deal. Let's go down to sale. Sean's checking. Sean, you're checking as well for me, are you, Han? Brilliant. Did I not press publish again? I'm sure I pressed publish. Oh, it might be hidden. It might be hidden, Sean. Can you unhide it for me? Oh, damn it. Sorry, girls. Sean's on it, okay? So you just want to make yourself a long strip, okay, like that. It needs to be at least 16. I would go 17 inches, okay? So you want it to be at least 17 inches long. I'm then just going to put my ruler on here and cut out a piece. Now, your strips, actually the width of these strips here... You want them to vary, these ones, okay? You want them to vary between one and a quarter and two and a quarter. Don't go any bigger than that. You can go, these bits can be wider, like this. You can see that's that's a nice long strip one. But this width, no bigger than two and a quarter, no smaller than one and a quarter, okay? So I'm just going to line this one up and I can actually get a one and a half out of this. So, like that. And then I'm just going to trim off both sides. So trim off anything down there, across the top, like that, and turn it and do the same this side. Now doing it this way makes means that you get lots of um, completely different trees, you know, strips. Just get that in line there. And get it up that way, like that. And across the top okay so there's one done all right and you would just make lots of lots of strips like that if you want to do it end to end to end the other way you could do it is by doing it the other way and cutting into it but you end up with some that are the same then okay so what i mean by that is we're going to grab some of these strips we'll just cut that one in half that one there's fine it doesn't matter that they're different lengths I'm just kind of lying these out i don't know if you can Get this, line this out like this. Oh, well, I've already got a long piece there anyway. I might use that one. There we go. That one. Have I got a bit of plain in here? There we go, like this. And you're going to line them out. It doesn't matter that they're different lengths because we can cut pieces like this and then these bits would go into others. Um, a little bit of orange. What else have I got here? Oh, I've got, oh, I've got that one. Oh, there we go, there's a little bit of black and some little skinny bits like this work quite nicely as well. Okay, a little bit of green. Okay, so we're going to stitch these together. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch them lengthways. So what I want to do is start with these ones and you're going to just line up one edge. Okay, so I'm going to line up this edge here. I'm going to stitch down quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go down like that. So, um, how are we doing? Everything okay? Yeah. Sean's just posted the daily deal. Oh, thank you, Sean. Did I forget to press unhi did I forget to press the unhide button again? I bet I did, didn't I? I mean, that's, I, I do it all the time. It's a real like ah with me. There we go. So I've done that one. I'm just going to add this one on, and I'm just going to line it up so I've got like one straightest edge. Don't worry about them being longer this side. Okay. And this was quite mindful yesterday because. It's not complicated, it's just straight line sewing. So any questions or comments there? Sean, so sorry, to Jeff, uh, Jennifer, she said, hi Jennifer, I responded to your, led to you on Saturday, it was the video on the 25th of September. Oh, was that about the fabric napkins? Yeah, I don't know why it's not on YouTube, I, I couldn't find it on YouTube either, but if you go back onto our Facebook page, it is um it is definitely on there. It's the twenty if you go scroll through the videos, it was yeah, like Sean said, the um twenty fifth of September, I think it was. Um and you've got the, the video there. Um, I will try and get it on to YouTube though. I I might have just missed it because we you know, sometimes when you're downloading lots it's easy to miss one. So uh... Here we go. And all I'm doing is just making a strip set like this, lining up one edge. Okay, I quite like the fact you've got different widths of fabrics in there. So you've got little pops of tiny, you know, tiny bits of colour against wider pieces. You can really just any scraps you've got, you can use for this. And going down again. Any other questions, Drew? No. No. So Drew's filming today because he's got a day off. He'd booked the day off because he was supposed to be doing his theory test. But obviously with uh, lockdown and everything, that can't happen. So, uh, let's 
So he's given us a hand today. And I'm gonna just keep, I'm just gonna keep adding. And I just need to add enough so that it's at least 16 inches, okay? It was quite nice yesterday because this is just, it's non-thinking sewing, which is quite nice. <laughs> you just have to go for it, which I like sometimes when you haven't got to think. You can turn your brain off a weeny bit, can't you? Um, that's, there we go. That's a straighter edge. Let's put that one on there. And it doesn't matter if your seams aren't particularly straight either. It's a, just a nice turn your brain off type of sewing. This is also the type of thing you could do like at the end of a project. You know, if, you've, um, if you're making another quilt or another project, any little strippy bits, just make up into strip sets ready for uh, when you want, you know, when you're gonna make some of these and just, you know, store them away ready sewn. And then you could just whip up a couple of blocks to add, add to it. Is this anywhere near 16? Oh, excuse me, ladies. My bobbin just ran out. Typical. Oh, there we go. Just grab a different colour for now. Just so we can keep sewing. Ooh, no wrong way round. Okay, so talk to me, please, ladies, while I'm just re-sewing this one. Any Anybody there? Anybody having a chat? Yes, Landra just says she just joined us. Um, we'll catch up later. Looks like looks something interesting I can... It looks like something I can you, you sorry I can't read today. Something I can use with all my recent miscuts. Oh I yes, don't... yeah. Something you can use your your um or your little uh, bits that you uh, accidentally uh, cut wrong. Yeah, so I had a bit of a cutting disaster the other day, bless her. But uh, it's um there's always a way of using up scraps. Always, always a way of using them up. So I'm just gonna keep going. Sorry, ladies, you just have to bear with me while I make this piece of fabric. Nearly there. Nearly there. I think we must be nearly 16 by now. Add another couple on at the top. There we go. Okay, how are, how are we doing? Oh, not quite. We need a couple more. Let's have um, let's have a bit of plain in there. Let's pop a cut a piece of that off. See, I'm not really thinking about it. You know, I'm not worrying too much. Just adding adding pieces on until it it's the right length. These work better, I think, if you go for the scrappy look, if you don't think too much about it, okay? If you're gonna color coordinate, do that prior, you know? So, nearly there. I'm gonna have to put one more on, I think. Where are we? Oh yeah, one more. Let's, um, we've got a widish one. There we go, let's use a bit of that on the very last little bit. And that should be long enough then. Okay. Okay, getting there. So, any other questions? Anybody else having a chat? Uh, Christine says, "Love the look of this. I have so many scraps." Oh, it'd be a brilliant project for using up some of your scraps. Really, really good. Is that Chris Goring? Uh, no, pen, pen drill. Oh, right. Oh, sorry, sorry, I was wondering. It's right. We heard from uh, one of our regulars, ladies. She's been poorly in hospital. I just wondered if that was her back with us. But, uh, but yes, it would be Chris. It would be Christine. It would be a brilliant way. It's it's fab for your scraps. It's not going to use up very much of it though, unfortunately. Right, so I've got a piece now that's at least 16 inches that way. I'm going to trim off this very edge, like that, just so I've got a nice straight edge. And then I'm going to cut two strips. I know you could cut two strips or three strips. If you're going to do strip sets like this, I would do several of them and then mix them up so you haven't got the same strip set in each block. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do a wide one on this one. I'm gonna do a two and a quarter, I think, on this one. So we're gonna go one, two and a quarter, like that. And I can use that one as well that we did first of all. So I'm gonna use that one in that one. And then this one's gonna have to have two the same one. And then I'm gonna do a one and a quarter as well. But you could do one in three quarters, one and a half. It really doesn't matter. I would fit, it looks better if you vary the sizes, but Minimum one and a quarter, maximum two and a quarter. Okay, there we go. So I could actually 
if you were doing obviously i've done lots of blocks but i could use that to get another piece out as well okay and any of these bits that are left over i would just trim off put them back in the pile and use them for another strip set okay so get all these bits out the way just for a second because i've got my three strips now so i cut from a load of fat quarters that i had in my stash these are 15 and a half inch squares okay so again i had pieces on the side of the fat quarter which have gone into my scrap bucket for another oh that might be quite nice actually if you did all solids as the trees with a like a you know white or a pale gray or something that might look quite nice as well but you want a square again you can make this your own you could do 12 and a half you could make them bigger you know i just chose a 15 and a half inch square a, a vaguely good size square you're then going to lie these on and kind of audition them a weeny bit so <clears throat> uh you don't want them all dead straight you want to give them a bit of personality so we're going to maybe have that one like that and then let's have this one next and we're going to have two sort of and i'm going to give that one i am going to put that one straight actually that one can go straight up like that and then this one can go just just next to it like that you know give them a bit of angle you know you might decide that you want them going this way it really doesn't matter okay how you lie them down you don't want them all to be the same so if we just come back up to the wall a minute Drew <clears throat> you can see that each one is slightly different okay if you try and do them all the same you're then going to start worrying about them matching up and stuff and you you don't want them to match you want them to be offset okay that's kind of the look of this quilt it also means you don't have to match them which is even better <laughs> you know if you try and do them all the same then then i would make yourself a little template i would mark out exactly you could if you wanted to do them all the same but it's a lot easier not to it's a lot lot easier not to so i'm gonna have that looking something like that i'm gonna grab my bigger ruler just a second because it made life a little bit easier and i'm gonna i know i'm doing this towards me ladies because of cutting okay i'm gonna line my ruler up against that first strip here okay again you can decide which edge you want to cut i'm going to cut this one here okay and i'm going to cut on the right hand this is the right hand side for me each time but you might decide if you want only a tiny widgy bit between these two that you cut this side and this side that'll make sense it'll make sense in a minute i'm going to cut up like that okay are you all still with me is everybody okay with what i'm doing Leave these kind of led out and then we're going to sew this one into here. We're going to insert it into there. OK, so I'm going to put this right sides together like this. And we're going to stitch all the way down there. OK, so back over to the machine. You, I'm sorry, just before you do, you can see that I've got a bit overhanging either end. You want want it to overhang, OK, because of how the, the angles and stuff. You want that overhang so that you'll be able to square up later. So we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to stitch that one down. So anybody having a chat? Anybody that anybody talking to me today? She just says she's watching intently. Oh, good, good. It's it's incredibly quick. This I found it very restful sewing because it was like that immediate effect. I was finishing something and I was getting you know putting something together quite quickly. But I wasn't having to think too hard. <laughs> I wasn't having to work out lots of, you know, different blocks and stuff, which I quite like that. Sometimes though and then you need some, something that's just gentle on your brain. Okay, so let me just move this, these bits out of the way because I don't need those. You want to iron it towards the backing fabric. Okay, so you want your backing fabric on the top like that and set that seam first of all and then roll it back oh, come off out of the way roll it back so that it's going towards the backing fabric like that okay touch of starch might be a good idea because these are really little so you know a little bit of starch might work quite well okay and then i'm going to pop it back into this space here okay so that's now going to fit into there and i want to join it to this one so the first thing the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to cut down this side here like that 
move that out of the way that's going to sit into there like that so this one is going on to here first of all so when you line it up so that you're not at too much of an angle you want to start by kind of getting those you know this is right sides with right sides get that sort of, sort of in the same space and travel over so it's as near as damn it in line and then line it back up okay i'm just gonna pop a pin in there just to hold that top while i get it over to the sewing machine like that now they're going to turn out quite big we're going to cut them down to 15 inches so you have got a little bit of play but if you just kind of go take it over to the machine think oh yeah can you see that that's down when this opens out you're losing quite a bit you want to kind of keep it in line as much as possible so i found by lining it up onto the green taking it over like that and then holding that in place it, it gave me a better um, a better lineup than than not doing it. And then I'm going to stitch down this one. So back over to the machine. We're just going to put. We're literally just going to insert these strips. It's like I said, very very easy to do. Doesn't matter if you go a bit wonky. It's brilliant. <laughs> so anybody there having a chat? Anybody? Anybody talking to me today? I feel like I'm just chatting nonsense at you all. Jacqueline says she said she's so glad uh, she found uh, a site. Oh, thank you. She loves the ideas you come up with. Enjoy the mic show. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I'm glad you watched and glad you enjoyed it. That's fab. So, there we go. Iron this one out. Again, I'm ironing it towards the backing fabric. So, like that. And then we're going to insert this one. So, that one's going to go like that. We're going to stitch down there, back over to here, and you can see it's really, you know, really quick sewing because all you kind of work was sewing the strips together. This bit is like six lines of sewing, and your block's done. Okay. Any other questions there? Any other comments? Uh, Shanda says you're welcome to Jacqueline. Ah. Hammer's watching. There we go. So I think we should do a little bit of a challenge post, okay, for this week. And we'll draw it on Thursday. I'll put it up onto Facebook once we get I get back to the shop. Um, I think the challenge, because this was trees, I think the challenge should be, oh, what should we do it as? Nature? Show me what you've made with nature. So whether that is, you have a little go at this, or you've used some floral fabrics, have you um have you crocheted i don't know um some poppies we did that crochet poppy thing didn't we you know something something natural so um how you interpret the word nature is entirely up to you but i'm going to do a little challenge post to be drawn on thursday for and we'll obviously same as usual put everybody in a name free prize draw and um we yeah we'll do nature so next one i just want to cut this last piece here so i'm going to go lie my ruler along this edge i could do that edge if i wanted to but i'm going to go this edge because i want them quite close together and this is quite a strong angle this one so in fact actually i think that's a bit too strong an angle i'm going to change my mind a wee bit i think i just want it to stand more like that rather than it looks like the tree is going to fall down there we go and the nice thing about this is that every block is different so i'm going to sew this one on and then i'm going to sew these last two so um so yeah we'll do it we'll do a bit of a challenge post and we'll draw it on thursday um so what what have you made what can you think of that you've got a picture of uh that would come into the theme nature okay because we i really we both say and i uh, and sean we all really like seeing the stuff that you've made it's fab. Down there, nearly there. A couple of lines left, and then we'll um, show you how to square it all up. Okay, that's that one, and iron out again to the backing fabric. And I, what that does is, as well, by ironing to the backing fabric, I don't know if you can see, it means that you it kind of rid you get a tiny little ridge when you iron, don't you? You get that little ridge, and by ironing it always to the backing fabric, it kind of sets this in because you've got these little ridges either side and gives it just a weeny bit of depth. 
Um, I think it'd also be really good for shadow quilting or matchstick quilting at these, which would be quite nice. So this one's going to go on like this, along that edge. Um, I need to just push it that way a bit, a little bit more overhanging that side. In fact, actually, I'm going to turn that one so it's at least opposite this one. Let's turn that one upside down. Here we go. Sew that one in. Any other questions there, Drew? Any other comments? No. You're all very quiet today, ladies. You're very quiet. Have any of you actually started having a go at the Hexi Manx that we did on Saturday? Has anybody had a go at it? We're actually a little bit international now. We had a lady from Ohio um, by the pattern, which was lovely. Really, really nice. She went on onto our um, website and, and did the digital download. Um, so we did discover, so at the moment, it won't let international do digital downloads. Our website is very odd. But if you um, if you put your address, because obviously a digital download is going straight to your email. So if you put your um, like your address wherever you are in the world in, but put the country's UK, it will let you do the digital downloads, which is brilliant. So if you are abroad and you want to order any of the patterns, just put the country's UK, and it still gets sent to your email address. So last one like that. Just line that up there, and then move it over. And your block's nearly done. Uh, Linda Thomason says, does it have to be fabric or knitting slash sewing? Can it be paper craft? It can be anything you like. Anything that you've made. It could be a cake. You know, if you if you do a bit of sugar craft, show us that as well. Yeah, no, anything at all. Why not? That's, uh, you know, we've had cross stitch and all sorts of sorts on the challenge post. So, yeah, yeah, you know, if you've, uh, I know, made a sugar craft hedgehog is a birthday cake for somebody or you know a, a mountain scene or something <laughs> whatever you fancy whatever you fancy as long as you've created it um show us your pictures right so there we go that's the last one on and that's that block nearly complete there we go so so you can see now that it's obviously a lot wider than we started with because I've added in these strips, but it's still the same width there. So we want to square this down now to 15 inches. OK, if you've done if you started with a 12 and a half, square them all down to 12. You know, you could do these tiny if you started with a six and a half and you're doing little ones. I would probably not put that wider strip in. But, you know, you can play around with this. Just square it down to a size that you're happy with. Oh, nearly knocking the, um, I'm just gonna grab my big ruler a second. Oh, can you? Doesn't work. There we go. So I'm gonna square this down to 15 inches now. So I'm gonna look through my ruler at my 15 line here and my 15 line there. Now I love these big rulers. I bought this from Siesta Frames at one of the shows. Um, they are, it's a 20 and a half inch ruler. They're not cheap, okay? They are quite expensive. But if you want to square up bigger blocks, it's brilliant. And what I'm doing is kind of looking through that area on the ruler to decide where I kind of want it. Do I want that tree really nice and close to this edge and more green here? Do I want it further over that way? You know, I'm actually going to go more like that, I think, on this one. And then just double checking again, that 15 in the 15, it's all within the fabric. And then I can cut up that way and across the top. And, you know, I, I'd give up on those pieces. I would definitely throw those away now. <laughs> you know, there's some scraps that you kind of just have to go enough, enough is enough. And then I'm going to turn it like that. So those edges that I've cut are now down here. And then I can cut my exact 15 by 15. Ooh bring it towards me so I'm not knocking my water over okay so there's my 15 oh, my 15 along that edge 15 along that edge like that you can see I'm only just in there I was a little bit uh, by the skin of my teeth that one was there we go <laughs> and get rid of that winny widgy bit there okay and that's my block now complete so you can see I've shoved this one up a little bit more because I quite like the idea of having that sort of negative space there. And I'll pin it up on the back wall in its place. So 
you can then either play around and decide, oh, actually, I might put it up that way. I quite like it up that way and put it in. And you can make as many blocks as you like. You know, I just did nine because I think this would be a nice lap quilt. I might actually, I really quite like it. I might make it bigger. Um, you know, quite easy to make bigger. Um, I might quilt as you go it. I might actually do it as quilt as you go and do scrappy, um, strippy binding on the front, maybe. You know, the sashing. Don't know yet. But I, I think matchstick quilting would work really well with this. I think it would really, really. So what I mean by matchstick quilting is when you do like lots and lots of straight lines, quite close together, like a quarter of an inch away with your quilting all over it. You know, I might not do this bit, but I might sort of go down both sides like that and follow those lines, but like matchstick quilting over them. And then I might put it all together and do that. Might do it as quilt as you go. Haven't decided yet. I might even do another row. So, so, but that's birch tree quilting. That's, um, you know, the idea of using, you know, you can also see, um, like with your scraps, you end up seeing little tiny pieces that are really cute. Like that fabric that I love, that Dashwood Studio. There was a tiny little scrap in there and I've got a little fox's face there. I've got a little bunny there. You end up seeing really like little snippets. <laughs> I've got a llama bum just there. That's the bum of a llama. <laughs> Yeah, you know, there's some little chickens in there. So you can really see like little tiny snippets of like your favourite fabrics and things, which is quite a nice way of playing around and preserving those as well, you know, even those tiny widgy little bits that, you know, actually that's going in my scrap bucket because that'll work really well in that. <laughs> you know, these bits obviously throw away, but you know, pieces like that, that would absolutely go in the scrap bucket now to do this sort of thing. So any questions or comments there, Hen? Uh, Susan says brilliant. I really like it. Uh, someone says something about a smaller ruler somewhere. I don't know oh, there was Sonia asked, hey, "Can you still square a big a blade block with a smaller ruler?" You can. You've got to do it in halves though. So um, I won't obviously I won't cut this one again. But this would have been bigger. Okay, I would fold it in half, and then I would measure from oh, fold it in half. <laughs> doesn't want to fold in half okay like that so if I want it to be 15 that would be seven and a half so Drew can you give me that 12 and a half inch um, ruler that's just there on the edge of the table no. yeah that's it now you can use the inches on your mat and it's not great to use your mat but you can use your inches on your mat but you can absolutely do it from the fold so I would line my seven and a half inch up from the fold and trim off and then I would fold it the other way like that and do seven and a half or whatever measurement you're know, half of whatever measurement you want and trim off that way okay or use your mat and lie your fabric down and count up your 15 and go and do it that way or whatever measurement is you're using so um i mean we don't recommend using your mats for really accurate piecing um i know a lot of people do but mats are all printed mass manufactured and all printed um and the, it's not necessarily exactly right the more you cut into it these markings warp and stuff so we would you know squaring up's a little bit different you i wouldn't worry about squaring up on your mat and using the inches on that but i would never use my mat for cutting like accurate two and a half inch squares or, or something like that or strips because this this does warp and it's not accurate after well it's not necessarily accurate when you first buy it it's near as damn it where you know these your rulers it they're like properly etched and everything and you know no they're more accurate so um so yes you can use a smaller ruler yeah, anything else there no that's pretty much it jean says it's really nice block but... fab yeah that's it lovely lovely right okay um that's it then i've got um we're doing some crochet tomorrow and we're going to do a basket weave and Beth is going to come on with me. So Beth is Drew's girlfriend and um, she's um, she's been learning some new crochet stitches and she's learned this new one called a basket weave, which is lovely. So I've asked her to come on with me tomorrow and show me. So she's going to be going to be demonstrating it for me tomorrow um, with me. Um, and then Sarah's on Wednesday and Thursday and Sarah's going to do a block on Wednesday. I think she's going to do the shadow block and then she's going to do um some techniques with your machine so blind hem and overlocking stitch on your machine on thursday um so yeah i will see you tomorrow daily deal <laughs> now thank you sean <laughs> it's now active so that's on so you can grab that if you want to 
Um, I think that's it. And I'll, I'll put the challenge post up as well later on this afternoon. Keep an eye on our Facebook page and I'll put the challenge post up. Congratulations to Carolyn. I will grab your address off you and get that sent out, okay? And we'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye.